okay, the challenge with system design is that it's very, very different from data structure and algorithm, D DSA kind of question. Yeah. Because like those you just practice, you have a really single correct answer. You validate your code and you get it correct or not, right? With mm -hmm. system design, in some ways, the whole point is that there is no correct answer. The whole point right. of system design is that depending on the trade-offs you're making, depending on what you're optimizing for, the answer will look different. And so both in the context of interviewing and in the context of like what you're doing at Google, where you're like talking with the team, I think that system design is stressing communication way more than DSA or other kinds of interviewing. And so um, I think the challenge of system design is that because there's no correct answer, it's like very hard to attack. It just feels very opaque. Like, what do I do? And so for that, I think the way I thought about it is whenever I have any system design question, whether it's like an actual interview setting um, or a, a real like architecture problem, I break it down into three steps. Number one is ask questions to reduce the ambiguity. Like, what are we actually trying to solve here? Number two is what are the different components of the system? And then number three, what are the long-term predictions or ways that this could change that we might have to accommodate. So that okay. way, I leave, now I have a, somewhat of a framework to figure out like, hey, here's how I might slice and dice the problem. Otherwise, it just feels very opaque. So that, that's like one, one lens to do through which to look at system design. And I think, you know, this is much more about a discussion rather than, you know, finding the single correct answer. When I talk to people about system design, what I'm looking for is where are they navigating the discussion? Because there are a lot of parts of a system design, which are actually not that interesting to talk about. I mean, yeah, we could talk about them and waste five, 10, an hour talking about something, but really what you want to spend your time on, and I presume this is what you and your team are doing, is like, what are the parts that are actually going to have meaningful ramifications long-term? And being able, being the person to navigate the discussion toward those parts of the system design, that in at its core, that's really the essence of a good system designer of like who can spot those hot spots or who can spot those uh, those areas where you really need to think ahead. And so it really, I don't, I actually feel like in some ways the answer, you know, the quote, 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 unquote answer is immaterial. It's more about how do you, how do you ask the right questions, find those like really interesting discussions. And then, you know, at that point, once you have the right question, you can, especially at a company like Google or Facebook, you can loop in the world expert in that. Like what you don't want to do is like a very classic mistake I see when I was interviewing people is they would spend like 10 minutes talking about, oh, how they like PostgreSQL as opposed to MySQL, right? Like oh. at the end of the day, that's like kind of immaterial. They're both relational databases. They're both SQL based. A more interest, interest, interesting discussion would be, hey, why do I pick a SQL solution versus a NoSQL solution, right? That's actually starting to think about trade-offs a bit more and like the ramifications, right? right. Um, so that's like, I think like what you're describing is, is more on the kind of, you know, how do you build that cash and, and what might go wrong? The other thing I would think about is a huge um, value add in this kind of discussion is past literature. So I don't know how exactly it would work at Google, but if there's a way you could dig up past architecture documents of your own team or adjacent teams that have done something similar and you looked mm. at how did they fail or like what assumptions were they making? What is applicable to what you're doing? That can be really instructive for, um, for what you're doing. And, and you'll be surprised how few people do that. Like don't think about, they'll, they'll say, oh, you know, I read a blog some, somewhere online about this, but very few people watch you do the work of like looking at path literature, which is oftentimes available right in the company in some like Google doc that you might have. Um, and also it just, it just makes you look so, super smart. You're like, hey, you know, like, six months ago or a year ago, this team did a very similar thing. And here's why exactly it applies to us. And if you come in with that kind of perspective and that kind of um, thrust behind your opinion, because you can back it up with, you know, this year worth of work the other team did, I think mm -hmm. it really goes a long way in you building up your reputation. And it just genuinely does add a lot of value to the, the discussion. When you, when I was looking at like very, very senior engineers at Facebook, like at L7, Mm -hmm. you know, they're brand new to the team. Of course, they don't know all the past context on Portal, which is the team I was on, right? Really where they had a ton of value is they would say, hey, I dealt with this exact problem or, you know, a very similar problem on my other team at Facebook or, you know, I came from Airbnb and we dealt with a very similar problem. Here's how we approached it. And so it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be like path literature on your exact team, which of course, you're not going to have as much context or knowledge, but the fact that this person was bringing in their expertise, which was still quite applicable, that is the mark of seniority to be able to translate that problem that they tackled and you know, mold it and get learnings from it that you can now apply to your current team. So it doesn't have to be you know, 
you like I, I guess what I'm saying is you're not handicapped necessarily by being new. You can actually right. have a value of being of having that fresh fresh perspective.